St. Elsewhere is a groundbreaking television series that started in 1982. It's set in an old, rundown hospital called St. Eligius in Boston, where the staff faces various challenges and shares many moments, some funny, some shocking, and some sad. The show is known for its realistic portrayal of hospital life and the personal stories of the doctors and nurses. One standout actor in the series is Ed Flanders, who plays Dr. Donald Westfall, bringing a sense of authenticity and heart to the show. As for favorite roles, Howie Mandel's character, Dr. Wayne Fiscus, adds a touch of humor to the often serious atmosphere of the hospital. Now, we're curious about your connection to St. Elsewhere. What is your most treasured memory or personal experience related to this series? Your stories and memories are important to us, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching for more surprising facts about this beloved series. Um, the, the most important tool after his mind. The TV series Saint Elsewhere was a medical drama that aired in the early 1980s. It was well received for its realistic portrayal of hospital life and its mix of humor with serious topics. The show was known for its attention to detail and the depth of its characters. It influenced other medical dramas that came after it. The series also had a significant effect on popular culture. It introduced viewers to a new kind of medical drama, one that was more personal and emotional. The characters and their stories stayed with viewers even after the show ended. Following the success of St. Elsewhere, there were several products and adaptations. These included books and other items that fans could buy to remember the show. The series also led to other TV shows that tried to capture the same feeling and depth of St. Elsewhere. Overall, St. Elsewhere left a lasting mark on television. It changed the way medical dramas were made and is still remembered today for its unique approach to storytelling. Atlanta and IV before the arrest. Can you tell us something about the injection of that drug? Well, too rapid an injection. In a dramatic turn of events, the show concluded with a twist that left audiences stunned, setting a precedent for future series. This unexpected ending was later mirrored in another show produced by the same company. Meanwhile, in a heartfelt attempt to lift the spirits of a wounded colleague, two characters resort to a comedic act involving inflated surgical gloves, referencing a similar act made popular by a cast member on a different show. Additionally, a remarkable coincidence links two actors, who not only share the screen, but also celebrate their birthdays on the same day. Christopher, I won't let you down. Petey! And the landscape of television dramas, experience, and youth often work hand in hand. This was evident when Norman Lloyd, the senior member of the cast, brought his wealth of acting experience to a prominent medical drama series. At the same time, he juggled responsibilities as a producer for another show, showcasing his ability to handle multiple roles in the industry. Meanwhile, William Daniels became a familiar face to audiences through his portrayal of a dedicated doctor, a role that later led him to be recognized for his work in educational family shows, connecting with a new generation of viewers. Well, I don't want my granddaughter spoon-fed preachy pablum. Just sets her up for a big letdown. In a memorable scene, William Daniels, portraying Dr. Craig, found himself in Philadelphia, where he was moved to sing lines from Sit Down, John, a nod to his role in the musical 1776. This heartfelt moment was seamlessly woven into the storyline. Legal challenges arose when a real-life company saw too much of itself in the fictional ecumena that acquired St. Eligius, leading to a name change and disclaimers in subsequent episodes. Alfrey Woodard's portrayal of Dr. Roxanne Turner left a lasting impression, and she later reprised a version of this role, showcasing the enduring connections between characters and the shared creative minds behind the scenes. We thought we'd get you out of here, take you to lunch or something. Oh, good. Wonderful. <laughs> Tell me. In the world of television dramas, the presence of a strong ensemble cast often means that not all actors will feature in every episode. Such was the case with Norman Lloyd, who, despite the large cast and complex production, became a regular from the second season onward. His portrayal of Dr. Daniel Auslander was initially intended for a short arc of four episodes. However, the character resonated so well with audiences that Lloyd remained on board for the entire six seasons, contributing significantly to the show's narrative until its conclusion. Helen Hunt, another notable actor, 
brought her rich family heritage to the series. With a lineage that includes entertainment industry figures and ancestors from diverse backgrounds, including German Jewish and English descent, Hunt's personal history is as varied as the characters she has played. Her family tree spans continents and professions, reflecting a legacy of artistic and cultural diversity. Uh, you know, up until that time, doctors were kind of iconic figures, uh, like uh, Dr. Kildare or Ben Casey. In a unique approach to storytelling, viewers could see the precise time of events unfolding on screen, as most episodes featured a timestamp in the corner during the opening act. The series concluded with a memorable twist on its production company's logo, depicting the iconic kitty in a hospital bed, symbolically ending its life just as the show did. In a blend of fiction and reality, actress Bonnie Bartlett portrayed the spouse of her actual husband, William Daniels, not only in this series, but also in two others, creating a rare continuity of their real-life partnership across different television landscapes. Maybe you need some time away from each other. Dad, it's not just Betty or Rick, it's everything. I mean, look at... In the world of television, connections between actors and their roles often lead to memorable reunions. Such was the case for Norman Lloyd, who, after meeting Charlotte Ray on Broadway, shared the screen with her again in a popular medical drama. Ed Flanders, a familiar face and three-time Emmy recipient, won hearts as the compassionate Dr. Donald Westfall. Meanwhile, Bruce Greenwood's journey took a turn from the ski slopes of Europe to the small screen, where his athletic past and resilience through injury informed his performances during his time on the show. Oh, Brandy. In the world of television, contrasting work ethics and backgrounds often converge. William Daniels, a seasoned theater actor, was known for his discipline and quick line memorization. In contrast, his co-star Ed Begley Jr., with a background in film, struggled with punctuality and line learning. The role of Donald Westfall, which became synonymous with Ed Flanders, could have had a different portrayal had Hal Linden accepted the offer to play the character. Meanwhile, Bruce Greenwood, despite initially declining a significant role due to scheduling conflicts with a film project, managed to juggle both commitments, allowing him to participate in the series while completing the movie. Boob job if I ever saw one. Are you kidding? Fun bags? William Daniels was a central figure in the show, appearing in 129 episodes, the most of any cast member. His on-screen partnership with Howie Mandel was particularly notable, as Mandel himself expressed the great chemistry they shared. Norman Lloyd, at the age of 67, also joined the cast, bringing with him years of acting experience to the ensemble. No, maybe. You okay? It's the baby kicking, that's what it is for you. In the backdrop of a bustling city, the opening sequence of a popular show featured the orange line train of Boston's public transit system. As the series progressed, this train was rerouted underground, rendering its previous depiction outdated. The show had a personal touch, with the names of doctors announced over the hospital's public address system, often being those of relatives and acquaintances of the cast and crew. For instance, Dr. Gwyneth Paltrow was mentioned connecting to the series' executive producer, Bruce Paltrow. Off-screen, the camaraderie was strong, with Norman Lloyd maintaining lasting friendships with fellow actors Howie Mandel and David Morse, showcasing a bond that extended beyond the screen. And then to see him a year or so later, leading an active life. In the world of television dramas, connections between actors and their roles often extend beyond the screen. Ed Flanders, known for his compelling performances, crossed paths with Christina Pickles at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor, setting the stage for their future on-screen chemistry. Their eventual collaboration brought depth to the medical drama that captivated viewers. Meanwhile, Mark Harmon's departure from the show was as dramatic as his on-screen persona, Dr. Caldwell, who faced a life-altering diagnosis of AIDS, reflecting the era's growing awareness of the condition. Off screen, the bond between William Daniels and Bonnie Bartlett mirrored their character's connection, as the couple's real life marriage added an authentic layer to their portrayals. These elements combined to create a show that resonated with audiences, offering a glimpse into the personal and professional lives of those within a bustling hospital setting. I expected 
I stayed late to tuck him in. You know the reason I volunteered today. William Daniels, a key cast member, balanced his role on this show with voice acting for Ascension Car in another series, recording his lines during breaks. His connection to the show was deepened through a personal relationship with Ed Begley Jr.'s family, which predated their shared screen time by many years. The show also mirrored real-life events. It referenced the dismantling of the Washington Street elevated train line, which had already been decommissioned and replaced by the Southwest Corridor by the time the episode aired. This attention to detail added a layer of authenticity to the show's setting. Why Elliot's here? Gosh, no! Let me see if I can go outside and At a social gathering, Norman Lloyd was offered a significant role in a new medical drama by Bruce Paltrow, the head of MTM Productions. Initially, Lloyd's character, Dr. Daniel Auschlander, was to appear in just a few episodes, but his involvement expanded to the entire series. The show was presented to NBC with the concept of being a medical version of the popular police drama Hill Street Blues. Additionally, Arthur Taxier took on the role of Dr. Morton Chegley, sharing a name with a character portrayed by Lloyd Nolan in an earlier series. Julia? Riot broke out. The inmates went crazy. I should have been stronger. In the finale, viewers found a clever layer of humor with nods to the creators through a character named after them and a playful homage to the fugitive. The episode also included a humorous directive to move the gurney, Hal tipping its hat to a well-known television director. A decade after meeting on the set of a historical musical, William Daniels reunited with Bruce Paltrow and Bly Eye Danner in their medical drama. Meanwhile, Chad Allen's portrayal of Tommy Westfall evolved from a supporting role to a pivotal figure, culminating in a twist that suggested the entire series was a figment of his character's imagination. This revelation sparked the Tommy Westfall universe hypothesis, linking the show to a vast network of series through crossovers and references, thus expanding its influence across the television landscape. Oh, no conquer it. You know what I want you to do? At least go and talk to Dr. Westfall about this. Transitioning from one role to another can be a significant career move. Eric Lanneville, known for his portrayal of Luther Hawkins, an orderly with ambitions in the medical field, made such a shift. His journey from actor to director began with the series itself, where he directed his first episode in 1984. This marked the start of a prolific directing career, spanning numerous popular television series across various genres. His decision to move behind the camera was influenced by the challenges he faced as an actor, particularly the limited roles available to him. His directing credits now include a wide array of shows, some of which are connected through a shared fictional universe. In another instance of art imitating life, Bonnie Bartlett and Ed Flanders, who played a married couple on screen, had previously portrayed husband and wife in a historical crime drama. Adding to the theme of personal achievements, Denzel Washington's son, John David Washington, made his own mark by joining a professional sports team as a running back, showcasing a different kind of talent within the same family. I didn't do anything wrong. Why don't you talk to Michael? Caldwell, I'm not taking anything. Before his role as a doctor on television, Mark Harmon's academic journey began with pre-med studies which he later shifted to communications. His portrayal of medical professionals extended from the early 1980s to the mid-1990s. William Daniels, despite not being a medical professional, gained significant recognition for his television role that led to invitations from medical institutions for commencement speeches, which he respectfully declined. Ed Flanders and Bonnie Bartlett, known for their regular appearances on the show, had previously worked together in a mini-series adaptation of a Stephen King novel about vampires, released a few years prior. Want to eat? No, I'm not hungry at all, thanks. Well, what brings you to the north? In the landscape of television dramas, personal connections often influence casting decisions, as was the case with Norman Lloyd, who joined the cast due to his friendship with the producer's family. Initially set for a brief appearance, Lloyd's character, Dr. Daniel Auslander, became a staple on the show, remaining until the end, thanks to audience appreciation and his ties to the show. Lloyd's impact extended beyond his on-screen role. His colleagues Ed Begley Jr. and Howie Mandel 
who shared the screen with him, celebrated his storytelling mastery and his enriching presence in their lives. Lloyd's anecdotes about working with Hitchcock provided both education and entertainment, cementing his status as a cherished figure among his peers. The series also cleverly intertwined characters from other shows, as seen with the orderly Warren Cool Coolidge, who brought a piece of his past from the white shadow to the halls of the hospital. This blending of roles added a layer of depth to the character and created memorable moments, such as an on-camera correction of a name mix-up, showcasing the show's playful side. My only problem is instead of lying around here, I'd rather be in my classroom, dazzling my... Ellen Bry's connection to the show began through a personal relationship. Her partner, John Massius, was not only a creator, but also a producer. This inside track led her to audition and become part of the cast. William Daniels, another key cast member, had an interesting encounter before joining the show. He was approached by Glenn, a Larson to audition for the voice of a car in Knight Rider. Despite initial reluctance due to a previous project's failure, he was persuaded to give it a try, leading to his distinctive voice becoming part of another hit series. The show's title, a less than flattering nickname for the hospital, St. Eligius, was sparingly used throughout the series, appearing in only nine episodes, mostly during significant moments like season openings and closings, with one exception. Just because I'm black doesn't mean that I fit in down there. What are you worrying about? In the landscape of television dramas, characters often come and go, but Dr. Daniel Auslander's journey was unique. Initially set for a brief appearance, his character's unexpected popularity among viewers led to an extended stay on the show. This change gave the actor, Norman Lloyd, a chance to explore the role in depth over several seasons. Ed Flanders, another key cast member, was notable for his consistent presence, missing only one episode throughout the show's run. Meanwhile, William Daniels, alongside his real-life spouse Bonnie Bartlett, achieved recognition for their on-screen chemistry earning them both Emmy Awards for their performances as a married couple. Their achievements highlighted the show's ability to portray complex relationships with authenticity and depth. Mrs. Zapata, hello. Dr. Westfall, Dr. Fiscus has asked me to take a look at you. I don't need another doctor, I just need some. In the years leading up to his passing, Ed Flanders shared the screen with Terrence Knox in The Road Home, a project also involving Bruce Paltrow, who had previously worked on the same show. Meanwhile, Norman Lloyd, an actor with roots in New York, made a significant choice to focus on acting over directing, which led to his portrayal of Dr. Daniel Auslander, a character whose background mirrored his own. This character became a familiar face to audiences, embodying the essence of the actor's own heritage. Grant Tinker and sort of pr proposed to him that doing a, sh a television show that took place in a teaching hospital, and it was Grant. In the bustling world of television production, the challenges of managing a large cast often lead to notable absences. Such was the case with Norman Lloyd, whose presence in the show became more consistent only from the second season due to the complexities of production. Meanwhile, Ed Flanders faced a turbulent journey with personal issues affecting professional relationships, ultimately resulting in his departure at the close of the fifth season, though he returned for a brief appearance in the final episodes. On a lighter note, William Daniels found a unique way to connect with his young fans during hospital visits. While his role as a doctor wasn't the main attraction, his voice work as the beloved Car Kai TT from Knight Rider brought joy to many, showcasing the unexpected ways actors can leave a lasting impression beyond their on-screen characters. For good. Yep. Mom here needs a CBC and a small tear repaired in the birth canal. Keep in the world of television dramas, relationships behind the scenes often influence casting decisions. This was the case for William Daniels, whose close relationship with Bruce Paltrow and Bly Eye Danner led to his role as Dr. Mark Craig. His performance, alongside his real-life wife Bonnie Bartlett, who played Mistress Mark Craig, earned them both Emmy Awards, reflecting their strong on-screen chemistry. Ed Begley Jr., a fan of Daniels, joined the cast as Dr. Victor Ailick bringing his admiration for Daniels to his role. Their collective performances contributed to the show's success and recognition in the television industry. You know, you make a great mother. You think so? Mm -hmm. Over the seat. In the world of television dramas, behind the scenes dynamics can be as compelling as the stories unfolding on screen. 
This was evident when GW Bailey departed from the show after its inaugural season due to disagreements with Bruce Paltrow, the executive producer. Meanwhile, William Daniels, who portrayed a character hailing from Boston, brought authenticity to the role with his real-life Boston accent, which he acquired at the age of 15. The show's namesake, St. Eligius, holds significance beyond the hospital setting, recognized as the patron saint of various professions including veterinarians and metalsmiths, reflecting the diverse backgrounds and challenges faced by the characters within the series. But next time you see your friend, tell him how you feel. In a unique blend of reality and fiction, the show's writers often infuse their scripts with personal nods to the production crew by naming characters after them. This playful approach extended to clever references spanning across various forms of media, including nods to other television series, films, theatrical plays, and literary works. Adding to the show's distinctive character, nurse Helen Rosenthal revealed an unexpected personal detail a Union Jack tattoo, a memento from her first husband. Meanwhile, William Daniels, alongside co-stars Ed Flanders and Norman Lloyd, faced the challenge of accurately delivering complex medical jargon, a task that required frequent consultation of medical dictionaries. Daniels' role also demanded a convincing portrayal of a surgeon, which included delivering a speech with the right mix of authority and expertise before commencing a surgical procedure. That means I'm ovulating. Yep, today's a day. Here you go. In the 1980s, William Daniels was a familiar face on television, not just for one, but two popular shows. On his off days from the medical drama where he portrayed Dr. Mark Craig, he lent his voice to the self-aware car kit in the action series Knight Rider. Both shows were broadcasted by NBC and ran concurrently from 1982 to 1986. Daniels was dedicated to his craft, having altered his natural Brooklyn accent to fit a variety of roles, including the Boston dialect he adopted for his character on the medical drama. This change in accent also served him well in later roles, such as the beloved Mr. George Feeney in the 1990s series Boy Meets World. The medical drama itself had a unique touch when it came to its production logo, featuring the MTM Kitty donning a surgeon's cap and mask, a playful nod to the show's hospital setting. That haunted house line would leave me to myself. Hey, where are you from? Probably.